Okay, let's get into some quadratics. So, 2.3 for today. Um, as always, I think we'll try to do this in two just to make it easier. I have no idea why I can't get these stupid videos to load faster, but I really am working on it. I promise I am working almost all day long trying to get everything uploaded for you guys. Okay, so 2.3 is quadratic functions. Quadratic functions. And um, a quadratic function has the form, so it's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero, so it needs to have that first term, that ax squared is what gives us um, the quadratic function. And this guy is our parabola, which we've already talked about a little bit, we're just getting into it much deeper here. And the nice thing about the quadratic function is when it comes to the domain, we can use all real numbers. So we can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So, because um, you can square any number, you can multiply any number by B. So um, all real numbers here, which is, which is really nice. Now, this is the um, general form of the quadratic. So we'll say general form. And when we learn about quadratics, even like before, before now, when you've seen quadratics in um, other classes, normally it's the general form, the ax squared plus bx plus c. But we've actually already seen some quadratics when we were doing um, our graphing, and we saw those in the standard form. So let's just make sure that we have both forms up here. And the standard form looked like this f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay. And um, the standard form is where we used our transformations to do some graphing. Okay, so um, we've seen standard form, we did that with graphing. When you solved quadratics, you know, back in your, you know, previous math classes, a lot of times you probably saw it in its general form. But anyway, both forms are going to pop up for us today. So let's start with the standard form just a couple times just to get back into the groove of doing this. And of course, I wrote in the middle of the board, so I didn't give myself a lot of space. Okay, so let's look at standard form. So again, I'm just gonna write this down. F of x is a x minus h squared plus k. Okay. Now, um, no parentheses at the end. When it comes to any parabola, whether it's in its general form or its standard form, um, every parabola has a couple of things. And so I'm just gonna draw a little sketch up here of our parabola so we can understand. Now that's our most basic parabola, but we just need that visual there. So every parabola is going to have this kind of central point, and this central point is called the vertex. Okay, so everybody has, every parabola has a vertex. And when your um, uh, parabola is in its standard form, your vertex is found by taking h k. Now thinking about this transformation wise, this is a horizontal and this is a vertical. So it's moving that parabola back and forth and up and down. So that vertex is gonna move and it's gonna be at the point hk. Now notice that that's a minus h and this says h. So we flip the sign on this one and we leave this one alone. Okay, so every single parabola has a vertex and every single parabola is gonna be symmetrical. So every single parabola is going to have symmetry, or what we call the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry 
is going to be the line x equals h. Right? Sorry, a little brain fart there. x equals h. So when that thing moves side to side, that, that axis of symmetry is going to move with it. And wherever that H goes, that's where your axis of symmetry is going to be. Okay. So vertex, axis of symmetry. And then another thing that we have is our opening. So every single vertex, or sorry, every single parabola is either going to open up or it's going to open down. We're not looking at the side to side, okay? That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the upward facing or the downward facing. And that's going to come from the A term. So if A is greater than zero, the parabola opens up. And if A is less than zero, the parabola opens down. given a parabola in standard form, um, we know that we can graph that with our transformations, but we're going to get just a little bit more specific this time and actually plot a couple more points than we did in chapter one. So we're going to take it and make it just a little bit, little bit more proper. Okay, so let me give you an example and let's work through it. So here they give us g of x is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 3. And it's going to say something like graph this by finding intercepts, vertex, axis of symmetry. So it's going to say find vertex, axis of symmetry, intercepts, and opening. So it gives you a whole list. Now opening, that looks wrong. No, it's definitely with the one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so first off, opening should be your easiest thing. Look out front, you see that there's no negative sign. So this one opens up, okay, opens up. Now, because we are in our standard form here, then finding the vertex shouldn't be that bad either. So to find our vertex, the only problem that we have to remember is we need to switch the sign on here. So the two will become negative two, and this guy will stay the same. So negative two, negative three. And then that axis of symmetry, which a lot of times you're gonna see abbreviated A of S like that, is just going to be the vertical line X equals negative two, and we'll show that in a second. And now the only other thing would be um, finding intercepts. So if we wanted to find the y-intercept, okay, intercepts of our graph, we can let x equal zero. So if we let x equal zero, g of zero, equals zero plus two squared minus three. Okay, well that's gonna be two squared, so that'll give us four minus three is one. So we have the point zero, one. Now, trying to fit this all into this little space, if we want the x-intercepts, then we're gonna set this guy equal to zero. So we're gonna say x plus two squared minus three equals zero. And here we're gonna to have to solve this out. So we can add the three to both sides. So we have x plus two um, equal, or sorry, squared equals three. And then we can take the square root of both sides so x plus two, and here's where it comes, is gonna be plus or minus the square root of three. And then we can subtract the two. So we get x is equal to minus two plus or minus the square root of three. Now, those are ugly. 
And guess what? We don't actually need them, but we found them. So if I ask you to find them, you find them. Whether or not you need them is a, is a different story. But So let me show you how we're going to graph this. And we're gonna graph it, again, a little more precise than we did um, back when we were in chapter one with the transformations. Okay, so nice big graph here. We know that it opens up, so we know we've got that going on. We got a vertex at negative two, negative three. So we're gonna go over two and down three. So we'll stay right about there. And we know that we have an axis of symmetry that runs right through that vertex. Okay, so there's our axis of symmetry. And like I said, that's gonna become helpful, but in a moment. Then we found our y-intercept to be positive one. Okay, so our y-intercept is positive one here. There's our y-intercept. And then we've got these two ugly things, which like I said, I really don't know, okay? And if we don't need them. And here's the reason why. Remember what we've said about the parabola, because of symmetry, we know that this side of the parabola goes like that, don't we? So because of that axis of symmetry, do we know what the other side of the parabola looks like? And we do. And we can actually use this other, this axis of symmetry and this point to find that if there is a point two off in this direction and up one, then there's a point two off and up one in this direction because of the symmetry. So when we draw in the graph, in order to get what we call a proper parabola, we need three points. We need the vertex point, and then we need at least one point on either side of the graph. Now, we have these two guys, one of them being here, and one of them being here, if you plug those into your calculator, but we don't need them because we've got our axis of symmetry point. So now we know that that parabola looks pretty much like that. That is a really good representation of our parabola. I can see all your work here, so you show me all your work, and then the drawing of your, of your parabola. Okay. So let's do one more of these, and then we'll take a break from part one and come back with part two. All right, what do I have I got for the next one? H of x equals negative two x minus three squared plus one. Okay. Now, as I look at my notes, there's one other thing that I wanted to make a note of. When you're drawing a parabola, this vertex point is either going to be your maximum value or your minimum value. And that's why it gets the name vertex. So looking at this, when your parabola opens up, this vertex is a minimum value. Vertex is a minimum value. The graph will never go lower than that vertex. So when they are, if your homework problem asks, asks you for a minimum or a maximum, that's another way of them asking for the vertex. Okay, so now let's graph this guy. Okay, so again, we've got our, all of our things that we're gonna look at. Now, because we've got a negative two out in front here, this one is gonna open down. So we know in the end that we're gonna have a parabola that is upside down here. Okay, so that's good, all right? Our vertex, remember, we're going to flip the sign. So we're gonna write that as a three and keep the sign the same. So it's gonna have a point of three, one on it. And that's also gonna be where our axis of symmetry is going to be. So it's gonna be x equals three. And then from there, again, it's just the um, intercepts. So if we want our y-intercept again, we're gonna plug zero in for x. So h of zero equals negative two times zero minus three squared plus one. All right, let's see what happens here. So negative three squared will be nine. 
So positive nine times a negative two puts us at negative 18 plus one, so negative 17. All right, well, that's kind of a crappy y-intercept, but oh well, it's just the way it goes. So how about our x-intercepts? So now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna set it equal to zero. It's three squared plus one equals zero. Okay, so we're gonna move this guy over and then divide by the negative two. So we're gonna left with x minus three squared equals, that'll be negative one divided by negative two, so one half. And again, here comes our square root, square root. So we have x minus three equals, and we don't forget our plus or minus the square root of one half. Do not worry about rationalizing the denominator or doing anything like that, totally unimportant there. Okay, and then we just are going to go ahead and add that three. x equals three plus or minus the square root of one half. Oh, righty. So, this one we're gonna have to do things just a teeny bit different because of our weirdo y-intercept. So let's see what we've got going on here. So I think I'm gonna go by like ones this way but as we go up and down, right, let's go down. Let's go by fives. So negative five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. This is positive five, okay? But this is gonna be one, two, and three. All right, just to help our graph be, you know, not absolutely monstrous. Okay, so we've got our vertex of three, one. So we're going over three, and we're coming up one. So if that's five, then we'll say one is right about there. And then we have that axis of symmetry coming back down, and I can't draw a straight line through the point to save my life, but go with it. And then we have our y-intercept at negative 17. So we'll say negative 17 is maybe about there. So we've got this graph that is opening down, right? So from our vertex, we open down, and we have this value right here. And that's one of our x-intercepts, isn't it? Okay, three minus the square root of one half. Well, one half is a small number. So the square root of one half is a small number. So three minus is gonna be right about there. Now, similarly, we're gonna have one here, but we're also gonna have another point that if this intercept is three off in this direction, I don't have a pen on this side, aren't we gonna have an, an, another point that's three off, one, two, three, so that'll put us at six, and down here like that, so this would be six, negative 17. So let me turn that guy around. Okay, obviously not symmetrical, just go with it, we're doing the best we can here. So that's what I wanna see, even if the graph doesn't look great. This is what I wanna see. I can see the vertex, I can see the points, I can see the extra symmetrical point, I can see these two guys, even though we maybe didn't plot them, and I did a really crappy job of drawing my graph, but we can see everything that we, that we need to see. Right, and then if someone asks you whether this graph has a maximum or a minimum, they're basically asking you to look for that vertex point, and in this case, it is a maximum value, okay? So we have a maximum. All right, so that is the start of 2.3. So we've done the standard form. Um, when we come back, let's look at the, um, uh, general form. Okay, sound good?